In their time, the Drazir created and discovered many marvelous things as they moved across the cosmos. Their grasp of technology and science was, perhaps, the greatest that will ever be seen in any universe. The ship they traveled on, the Nautilus known as Narud, was one of the greatest achievements, for it allowed them to explore the infinity of space with all of the comfort and peace that a creature would need in their home world. Though their strides forward are hard to quantify, there is an invention that stands above all others. One that came to the Drazir long before they set out towards the closest star in their system. Before even, the Nerud was conceived and built in the massive spaceports of their home world. The Ambit Amber. A chemical mixture extracted from a plant indigenous to the Drazir planet. This substance was the first that allowed the Drazir to peer beyond the boundaries of their home and seek knowledge in the stars. It would be the thing that would guide them to their eventual demise. When ingested, the amber allowed select Drazir to see and understand hidden currents of temporal energy that made up the transcendental pathways of the universe. In essence, it allowed certain individuals to peer into the future and gain knowledge and insight into events yet to come. These individuals would become integral parts of Drazir society, acting as the guiding hand which pointed Nerud's course across space. Dubbed astropaths, they were the key piece in the mission that the Drazir had assigned themselves. The Amber provided, and the astropaths interpreted and informed. Each of the great houses was assigned their own astropath, who would advise on all important matters that came up, and would work in tandem with one another to map out a path forward. The astropaths were held in high regard by all of the Drazir. They had to sacrifice much in order to connect with the Amber. Their bodies fused with conduits which would interface with Nerud itself. They were held in place for long periods of time, while the Ambit Amber was constantly fed to them through specialized helmets. Among the astropaths, there would come to be an extraordinary individual, a man known as Talratha. Assigned as the astropath to House Almarunum, Talratha was a genius among his peers. His grasp of the amber allowed him a greater foresight, and his intellect provided him with an unparalleled ability. He was able to read the astral waves that guided their course like no other. With Talratha at the head of the astropaths, and their knowledge being used by the seekers of Nerud to direct their path, the people found a unity that allowed all of their great deeds to exist. It was the amber and Talratha's prowess with it that guided Nerud through endless eons of progress and safe passage. In his time, Talratha would come to understand the hidden workings of the void, and his understanding would lead him and Nerud the ultimate destination. Alepsis Tora. Initially, Talratha and his kin were overjoyed by the discovery. Tremendous amounts of effort were put towards the study and understanding of Alepsis Tora. With his research, an idea began to spread among the Drazir. The idea that what lay within Alepsis was none other than the source of everything in the universe. What's more, they started to believe that the energies that made up the collapsed star were part of a grand design. A pattern created by an intelligent being. A being who had created not only Alepsis, but everything outside of it, including the Drazir. And that the only way to meet this grand creator was to enter Alepsis Torah. After countless centuries, we have arrived at our destination. The seat of creation, Alepsis Torah. All paths have led us here. Within that engulfing black, every stellar current of the entire universe is guided and formed. An eternal choreography to the dance of galaxies. We did not come here thinking to find life, for nothing could survive this void that has consumed a hundred trillion stars. Rather, rather, we seek the origins 
of the universe. Entropy is implacable, but perhaps there is a means to reverse it, or else um, recreate its formation. A means we might find here, at the beginning and end of all things. We have found so much more. We have collected and deciphered in an incogitable in amount of data from within, and while the results are far less conclusive than we would like, a clear pattern has emerged. The universe is not governed by random forces. It is malleable, calculated, subject to an algorithmic cogency that belies artificial, dare I say, intelligent design. A creator. We must learn more. Some wish to enter the black hole, an attempt to meet our ostensible architect. This desire is logical given how little we have been able to learn remotely. But it makes me uneasy. A foul smell shimmers on the horizon of time. The, the ambit ember will show me more, but it will take time. Thankfully, those who would face Alexis Torah are a minority. The Drazir have always trusted the intuition of the astropaths. That is why we exist. The Drazir will not alter course now. While this idea was initially dismissed by many, it slowly festered in the minds of the Drazir. The rampant desperation that had built up inside them after decades of travel without a hint of other life drove them towards fixation on this thoughts of a grand creator. As the desire grew among the people, Elratha grew ever more concerned that this voyage would come to be. The spark caught within the Drizir, spreading like holy fire among the people and building into a religious fervor. Alepsis became more than just a physical and scientific ideal. It took on the form of a deity in the eyes of the people, a rite of passage towards ascension and truth that could only be achieved through entropy. We are but stardust. Even I, Precept Surus, seeker primus of the house al Marunam are made of the same substance that breathes stars and shapes planets. There is no difference between the Drazir and the comet, or gas nebula, save for one thing. We know. For a thousand millennia, we have sought others like ourselves. Stardust that knows how wasteful this was. How selfish our quest to fear that we needed connection. As we wandered in the dark, the dark itself grew deeper. The very stars shuddering in our vain, glorious quest. Only at the end do we see the truth. There is chaos in truth. Ruin in clarity. Here at the seat of creation, we see the eyes of the Creator. Hear her call. And are thus unraveled. She waits. We squandered what was most precious. And so the curse we cultivated. Now we descend into darkness. To bear our souls to the endless. There can be no other path. Because we... know. Meanwhile, Taratha used the Amber to look deep into the future. He saw the truth of what lay waiting for the Drizir. The End. Taratha did all he could to hinder the desire of those around him to enter the Collapsed Star. The faith that the Drizir had placed on the Astropaths after eons of service was overtaken by the fervent need find meaning in their journey. Alepsis had to be the reason they had left their home, 
and traveled so far. It had to have meant something. Not only were his efforts losing traction due to the ideology that had taken hold of his people, but Telratha also found himself opposed by the custodian. While traveling through Narud, we learn that the custodian is an artificial being, created by the Drizir to help with their goals of finding life. It is a hyper-intelligent computer, designed to assess and understand complex concepts and provide his input for the Seekers and the Great Houses. In our exploration of the Ophildi, we also learn that the custodian we meet is not the first iteration. Long ago, the first custodian turned on the Drizir. They tried to use the core of Nauru to stop the Drizir from continuing on their mission. The tightly wound coil tells us why. The custodian foresaw the ultimate end of Nauru, and following its protocol of protecting the Drizir, it saw revolt as the only solution to the problem. It had to stop them from destroying themselves entirely, even if it meant wounding them. We know that in this, it ultimately failed broken down into base aspects and repurposed. We see from the memory core 2 in the decorum cipher that the first custodian still existed within Narut, just in a lesser capacity. It's interesting that the first custodian would be proven right by Talratha's visions, years after its revolution was stamped down. Had it succeeded, perhaps Narut would still exist in its original form. More ironic is the fact that the second custodian, the one we encounter, would be the one to tip the scales and seal the fate of the Drizir. With his approval, Telratha was overruled by the Council of Seekers, and the decision was made to enter the seat of creation. When we enter the Forgotten Prison, we encounter a voice behind several layers of protective glass. It speaks to us of the fate of Nerud and his great plan. He asks for our aid in finding the missing piece of his Ark, telling us that the Custodian will drive Narud back into the Black Hole, and that he must protect what remains of the Drizir. What he seeks is a container, holding the remaining living specimens of his people. The voice, we come to learn, is that of Talratha. In an attempt to protect himself and a few others from what was to come, Elratha locked himself away in an underground facility of his own devising. As we know, what he predicted did in fact come to pass, and Nerud was ravaged by the energies of the event horizon. Later, we meet the custodian, who still stands opposed to Telratha. They are the last two vestiges of the Drizir, still facing off after so many years. He asks us to find Telratha to take from him the last piece he needs in order to drive Nerud back into Ellipsis Torah and save the Drizir that are still within. When we question him on this logic, he claims it is the only course that remains. Perhaps true. Regardless, we must find Telratha, which we do, hidden away in an underground facility. Here, we learn what became of him in the time since his self-appointed exile. Entombed inside his bunker, Daratha dove deeper into the ambit amber, suffusing and mutating his body with the chemical until it forever altered his physical and mental state. The chamber we find him inside is perpetually filled with the amber, now an absolute necessity for his survival. Madness would overtake him as the years stretched on and he continued to extend his life by absorbing and transmuting the energies of space and time. We also learn of the tragic fate of those that chose to enter with him, with respect, Magister, everything that remains of the Drasir lies within this chamber. The utility of these records is debatable. Very well. You pursue your given purpose as I pursue my own. I can hardly fault you for that. I will indulge. What is Ellipsis Torah? Those who might have attained first hand knowledge have been swallowed by it. But I too have 
seen it. In what way is available to me? Within your body, the paths of blood vessels, no matter where you start or which direction you take, all lead to the same point. A singular beating heart. So it is with Alepsis Torah. It is the beating heart of the universe. But it is so much more. There is the taste of artifice about it. There's intelligence. Perhaps Alepsis Torah is that intelligence, or Perhaps it is merely an agent of it. I know not for certain. I do know there is volition behind it. The Drazir were born of this volition as light is born from a star. Yet now, as the universe grows dark and cold, that intelligence has no further need for us. We are to be undone, not destroyed. Indeed, this intelligence bears little thought toward us at all. We will simply cease, like a dream upon waking, as though we were never real to begin with. That is, if we do nothing, or if the custodian has his way. We will jump back into that beast and be consumed like our brethren. But I have another way. The Abbot Ember has shown me everything. I know how to preserve the Drazir, no matter what the Custodian or Lepsis Torah might do. Enough! We should begin immediately. Awaken the others. The shields of this chamber will have spared them the horrors of Lepsis Torah, as they did for you and I. Bring them before me, one by one. I will explain to each what I have seen. I will explain what must be done. And one by one, they will make a choice. And when I have spoken with the last, then you too will come to me, Magister. And you too will make a choice. Alratha offered each of them a choice. The same choice he offers us when we finally meet him. Join his ark and become part of a greater whole, or be destroyed. Our decision is irrelevant. It's a false choice. Alratha had long ago dismissed the idea of free will. Now believing that fate is the only true force in the universe, and that the destruction of the Drazir was decided the moment the first amber was used. He now sees himself as a sort of god, being able to see fate's hand before it moves thanks to the amber that has poisoned his mind and body after so much use. We end his life, and in so doing, we find a piece of his soul, or at least something resembling it. It would seem that, in the end, Dalratha found what all the Drazir had sought after, but never truly uncovered. With Dalratha gone, the Custodian is the only being that remains for us to interact with. Whether we choose to bring back what he requested, or not, is perhaps the only choice we are really given in this journey. Regardless, it does not matter. The Drazir are gone. Outside of Nerud, nothing remains. All that is left is Alepsis Torah looming above, uncaring as ever, and perpetually ready to devour all things that dare venture close. The custodian sits within his temple, patiently waiting for his opportunity to obtain that which he lacks, and bring an end to what remains of his world. There is something strange about his goals, an almost contradictory logic to what he wishes to do and what he asks of us in order to achieve it. Perhaps the custodian has kept things hidden from us, things that also hid from the Drazir, things that led to their destruction. That is another story. If 
you made it this far, thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. We've seen some really awesome growth and the community is slowly getting stronger, which makes me incredibly happy.